Okay, in this very first solo, what I'm trying to do is establish the melody of the tune and then play off of it slightly, which is what we do as jazz musicians. We never play a melody as it's written in a book because that would be very stiff and unmusical. So we try to add some grace notes and some basic arpeggio figures to add to it. In the very first measure, you can see that I'm playing right off a C major arpeggio. I just go... And you can see that's right off of, right off of a basic C triad arpeggio. So that's a very easy line to play. However, what you want to do from the beginning, even as a beginning player, is you want to get a sense of swing in your playing. And to do that, it's kind of a hard thing to talk about, but it's not a hard thing to hear when you got it right. And here's what it should sound like. So it shouldn't sound like... big difference between those two things in terms of getting into the music and really making it flow. So always working at whatever level you're at, you're always working on putting some feeling into your playing and making it swing. And again, it's something that from listening to a lot of recordings, you start to play along and get that feeling. Moving along in the uh, third measure, you'll see that I've basically got outlining an E7 arpeggio. And again, I would recommend that you work with my arpeggio book from Mel Bay Publications, Guitar Arpeggio Studies, because this is actually just a shape of an E7 arpeggio. Right here on the seventh fret, right off of this shape. And basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using some passing tones. And again, that's creating a lot more feeling than if I was to play right down the arpeggio. So the arpeggios really can help you make some good lines, but you need to add some passing tones to it. Then we move on, moving on to measure five, I've got also an A7 arpeggio. And again, that's right off the arpeggio. Okay, but again, I'm making it swing. Then I move to the D minor. And then get right off the D minor arpeggio. Then I've got another line. This is a common jazz development. I've basically taken the same figure and I've played it in three different octaves. And that develops some energy in your playing. As you go to a higher octave, you're actually creating some sense of momentum and drive. And move on to the A minor. Get a little slur in your lines there. This kind of a slur idea is used by all kinds of guitar players, and it's one of the things that is very idiomatic to what we do as guitar players because we're able to get that nice bluesy sound. So whether you're in Nashville or you're in New York playing in a jazz club or you're playing with a hardcore blues band in Chicago, this sound <laughs> is very important. And it's, it's, you know, it's part of what makes the guitar different than other instruments. So work on getting a nice sound. And again, just study what I'm doing right and left hand. Get that nice, uh, nice legato slurring. <laughs> now this is right at measure 17, back to the C major. Listen to how it's right off the arpeggio. This reminds me, well, actually when I wrote out this solo, it reminds me of some of Charlie Christian's earlier work. Right off the arpeggio, but creating a good sense of drive. And again, that doesn't sound like an arpeggio. It is exactly the notes in the arpeggio, but it doesn't sound like one because I'm mixing it up with some nice rhythms and again, I'm making it swing. It doesn't sound like... That's the same thing played with no feeling and no swing. So always want to work on getting that feel of swing. Right off the arpeggio again. Now moving to measure 21, I developed some energy here. Here's another way to develop energy by playing a repeating lick. Notice I hit the harmonic there just because that's kind of a cool thing to do. Could have done that, but I hit the har harmonic there on the A. But anyway, this is just this is another common idea it comes from the blues. Don't be afraid to repeat a phrase. Sometimes beginning students are scared to repeat a motif or or a lick because they're afraid it's going to sound boring or sort of not hip, but au contraire, it can actually sound very hip. 
And then I do the same thing, same kind of motivic development, right up the D minor arpeggio. And then notice there that I'm playing just the arpeggio, except that I'm adding the, um, you know, the inner notes surrounding it. This is a good technique to work on. And study my right and left hand, and you can see that a lot of it is, is using my left hand to create these, um, these, this slur. So I'm not hitting it three times with the triplets, I'm hitting it once. So that's a very good technique to work on. And again, right up the arpeggio. Then we come to the next measure on the uh, F major 7, measure uh, 25, and I'm going... Right off the arpeggio. Blues. I'll probably say this a million times throughout the course of the CD-ROM, but it never sounds bad to sound play the blues. Always sounds good to play the blues because you're referencing the roots of the music. And the uh, roots of jazz are blues, as are the roots of rock music, are great, you know, indigenous American music forms. So... <laughs> And then at the very end there, I put a very fast phrase in just to sort of lead you into some of the ideas that I'm going to be doing in the solo, in the second solo section. And that's a fast pattern. Um, and those ideas are more intricate, and we'll get into them as we go into the um, next solo.